the, the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. Hi, you're watching Kerfato. My name is Buba Gajigo. And this is your educational program. We're going to bring you primary school lessons. If you have kids at primary school level, please get them prepared. Give them a pencil and a book. I hope you will enjoy these lessons. Are you thinking of owning your dream homes? EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three or four bedrooms. Or our story buildings, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans. At our Sanyang Seaview Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, sonar panel and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 32592200. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. children and staff of Mary's Little Lamb School are contributing this song to help in the fight and sensitization of coronavirus in the Gambia. Dear children, please listen to doctors' advices and the Ministry of Health to help stop the spread of this virus. Avoid handshakes, avoid social gatherings, wash your hands always with soap and clean water, stay at home. And if anyone around you is suspected of having the virus, the number to call is 1025. 1025. Hello children. Hello Is coronavirus really dangerous? Yes, Yes, we can. Yes, we can. 
Yes, uh, good day, our able listeners and viewers. Welcome to yet another lesson on the mathematics. Of course, uh, the lesson is on the, the primary school level. Uh, in this lesson, we are going to discuss a uh, word problem involving fractions. Uh, if you're following the program, you have done uh, fractions. Uh, we've done almost three lessons on fraction. And the last one that we did was on the addition and subtraction of fractions. So before we move to our lesson proper, we are going to have a, a quick uh, revision on what we have done on the addition and subtraction of fractions. So this was an assignment that was given to you, and you were asked to try it at home. Of course, before we move to the lesson proper, we'll have to deal with it and then proceed to our proceedings today. Uh, looking at the first section, we are given a fraction, uh, 3 over 4, that is 3 fourth minus uh, 1 fourth. We said the rule on the subtracting or adding fractions of the same denominator, uh, hence the denominators are the same. We just uh, add or subtract the numerators. So that is exactly what we are going to do. Uh, starting from the first one, the first one we have 3 all over 4 minus four, uh, 1 all over 4. This is going to give us. Hence, we are taking the difference of the uh, numerators, that is 3 minus 1, all over, all over 4. 3 minus 1, all over 4. And this will simply give us, 3 minus 1 will give us 2, all over 4. So, when we take the difference of 3, all over 4, minus 1, all over 4, the answer is going to give us 2, all over Four. That is for the first one. Then the second one, we have three fifth. That is three all over five minus two fifth. That is two all over five. Again, if you observe that the denominators are the same, we just take the difference of the numerators. The denominators are both five and five. So this is going to give us three minus two all over five. I hope you do understand why we are having we are taking one of the denominators. It has been. Uh, but just in the previous lesson. So 3 minus 2 will give us 1 and bring our denominator, which is 5. So if you take the difference between these two fractions, that is 3, 3 fifth minus 2 fifth, the answer is going to give you 1 fifth. From there, we move to the third one. Let us see. Let us see we have 7 eighths minus 4 eighths. That is 7 all over 8 minus 4 all over 8. Again, the denominators are the same. We subtract the numerators. So we are going to have 7 minus 4 all over 8. If you take the difference of the numerator, the 7 minus 4, you just take one denominator and then you proceed with it. So 7 minus 4 will give us 3 all over, all over 8. So when you take the difference between 7 all over 8 minus 4 all over 8, the answer will give us 3 all over 8. Then letter D, we have 2 sixths, that is 2 all over 6, minus 1 sixth, that is 1 all over 6. Again, if you observe, the denominators are the same. They both have the same denominator. So the rule is you take the difference of the numerator, that is, you subtract the numerators and further simplify. That is going to give us 2 minus 1 all over all over 6. And 2 minus 1 is going to give us 1 all over 6. So if we have 2 all over 6 minus 1 all over 6, the answer will give us 1 all over, all over 6. Then E, E we have 5 all over 7, that is letter E, we have 5 all over 7 minus 3 all over 7. We are asked to take the difference of 5 all over 7 minus 3 all over 7. Again, like the others, if you observe, they have the same denominator. So we are going to subtract the numerators. That is simply going to give us 5 minus 3 all over 7. 5 minus 3 all over 7. 5 minus 3 is equal to 2 all over all over 7. So when we take the difference, that is when you subtract 5 all over 7 minus 3 all over 7, the answer will give us 2 all over 
or over 7. Then the last one, the last one, which is letter F, we have 8 all over 13 minus 5 all over 13. Again, just like the way we answered the previous question, uh, we look at the denominator and realize that the denominators are the same. Uh, then we are going to subtract the numerators. So in doing so, we are going to have 8 minus 5 all over 13. Because the two fractions have the same denominator, so you're going to maintain one denominator. So if you take the difference between 8 and 5, that is 8 minus 5, 8 minus 5 will give us 3 all over 13. So therefore, if, we, if you take the difference between the two fractions, 8 all over 13 and 5 all over 13, the answer will give us 3 all over 13. That is all for what you've done uh, in the previous lesson. Now we move on to the lesson proper. So as I said earlier, we are going to uh, see how we apply the concept of fractions in real life situations. We are going to have problems that are going to be solved using fractions. That is word problem on the, on the fractions. In this problem we have a class A, that is class A, has 15 all over 19 of each student buying school lunch. Maybe at a certain school there is lunch sold there and 15 out of the 19 students of the school are buying school lunch. Class B in another class in the same school has 13 all over 19, that is 13 out of the 19 students uh, buying lunch at school. So here we have two classes. The first class has 15 out of the 19 students buying lunch at school and the second class has 13 out of the 19 students buying lunch at school. So now the question is, what we are asked to find is, which classroom has the largest fraction of students buying the lunch? Which classroom out of uh, the two classes, that is class A and class B, has the largest fraction, that is the largest uh, number of students buying uh, lunch at school? We are going to compare the two. We have the option A is class A, which has 15 all over 19. That is 15 students out of the 19 students in classroom A. And uh, B is saying classroom B is 13 out of the 19 students uh, in classroom B. So let's look at the two fractions. The two fractions that we have is 15 out of the 19, and we have 13 out of the 19. Both classes have the same number of students. But in class A, 15 students buy lunch at school out of the 19 students. And in classroom B, 13 students buy the lunch at school out of the 19 students. So you've done in your previous lesson on, uh, on fractions, uh, comparing fractions. So you will realize that, hence the denominators are the same. We look at the numerators. The one with the higher number is the one that is greater. So obviously, judging from that perspective, we realize that the one that has 15 out of 19 uh, has the highest number of students buying lunch at school. And if you look at the options that we have, classroom A is the one that uh, qualifies for, for that. Uh, we'll have classroom A as our answer. All right, we look at the other question that is available for us here. We have a whole is divided into four equal parts. We are asked to write, write the fraction that represents three parts of the whole. A whole is divided into four equal parts. Write the fraction that represents three parts of the whole. We can assume to be whole to be anything, but it has to be divided into four equal parts. So if you take the whole to be, to be that, if you take the whole to be, to be that, we are going to divide it into four equal, four equal parts. 
we have that. So we assume that all the parts are equal. Now what we are looking for, what we are looking for is write the fraction that represents three equal parts. The whole is already divided into four equal parts. So if we are reading, uh, using the idea of shading the equal parts, we are going to say three equal parts here. So if we choose to say this part, and this other part, and this other part, now you see that three parts are what? Are shaded out of the whole. So how do we write the fraction uh, of the three parts of the whole? This is simply going to give us how many parts are shaded in this whole. We have one, two, three parts. So we're going to have three all over. The whole is divided into how many equal parts? The whole is divided into four equal parts. So one, two, three, four. So we are going to have three, three fourths. So the answer to this question is going to give us three fourths. We proceed to another another question. In this one, it's a similar idea like the other one. It reads, a whole is divided into six equal parts. Write the fraction that represents one part of the whole. A whole is divided into six equal parts. I repeat. Write the fraction that represents one part of the whole. In this other case, we have a whole, but it is divided into six equal parts. And then we are asked to write the fraction of just one out of the whole. So again, we are going to go further to try to put this in a pictorial form. We are going to have a whole, and we are going to divide this whole into uh, six equal parts. Let's say we have one, two, and we divide it like that. Well, it seems not to be very equal. So I would like to take it again. We need a whole, and we are going to divide the whole into six equal parts. We have a whole, and we divide it into six equal parts. There we have it. We are almost to the answer. Now we have a whole, and we have divided it into six equal parts. So can we confirm the parts that we, we've divided it into? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. What we are asked to write, uh, what we are asked to write, we are asked to write the fraction that represents one part of the whole. So we need only one part of that whole. So assuming that we are going to set the part of the whole, we are going to set only one part and see what is that equal to. You realize that we've divided the whole into six equal parts, but one out of the uh, six, whole, uh, six parts is shaded. So the answer to this question, how many shaded regions do we have? We have one shaded region. So that is going to give us one all over. How many parts do we have all together? Or how many parts is the whole divided into? The, uh, the whole is divided into six equal, equal parts. So the answer to this question is going to give us one sixth. That is one all over, all over six. Then we move on to another question. Today we are going to solve many questions, so don't worry. Even the ones we are thinking about right now, we'll solve them. We'll soon get there. Again, we have a similar question, just like the other two that we've solved so far. A whole is divided into seven equal parts. In the first question, it was divided into four equal parts. In the second question, it was divided into six equal parts. But in this case, it is divided into seven equal parts. We ask, write the fraction that represents four equal parts. That is four parts out of the whole. Again, I will take the question. A whole is divided into seven equal parts. Write the fraction that represents four parts of the whole. Write the fraction that represents four parts of the whole. Let's have a whole and we divide it into seven equal parts. We have a whole. We divide it into seven equal parts.
we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So let's confirm how many equal parts is our whole divided into. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have a whole, and this whole is divided into 7 equal, equal parts. And the question still reads, write the fraction that represents 4 parts of the whole. So again, let's take 4 parts of the whole and say it. Let's say 4 parts here, and see what will that equal to. You say there are 2 parts. That's the third part, and finally, we've said four parts. We are almost to the answer. Now, we have a whole that is divided into seven equal parts, and then we have four parts out of the seven equal parts that are seeded. So, to answer the question, uh, write the fraction that represents four parts of the whole. How many parts? In our whole, uh, I said it. We count one, two, three, four. So four parts. Four parts are said it. How many equal parts is the whole, whole divided into? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The whole is divided into seven equal parts. So the answer to that question is going to give us four all over seven. That is four seven. That is going to be the answer to uh, our, fourth, uh, our third question, rather. Then from there, we have another one. And it reads, the artist starts painting the wall. There is a certain artist. Maybe if you are lucky to be an artist, we are referring to you. Started painting the wall. The parts of the wall that he the parts of the wall that look white are not painted. So if you are seeing the diagram right now, you will realize that we have a wall, and the wall is divided into one, two, three, four, five, six. It is divided into six equal parts. So the emphasis is the two spaces here, the two parts that they are seeing in white, are not yet painted. But all the other parts are painted because we are seeing colors there. So we have yellow. We have blue, we have orange, and we have green. So all those parts are painted, but there are two other parts that are not painted. I'm reading question four there. Which statements above, which statements about the wall are correct? Which statements about the wall are correct? Select the two correct statements. Select the two correct statements. So we have some statements down here. We want to uh, discuss the statements and see which among them, uh, which out of all of them, two of them are correct, and see which ones are correct. Each painted part, that is first, uh, the first one, in the first statement, each painted part is one fourth of the whole wall. Each painted part is one fourth of the whole wall. Hello, let's sit back and analyze this. We have a wall. The wall is divided into how many equal parts? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It is divided into six equal parts. And the first statement is saying each, each painted part is one fourth of the whole wall. Well, this statement is not true because the wall is not divided into four equal parts so it cannot be one fourth of the of the wall so the first statement is not uh, true it's not correct then we look at the second statement the second statement reads each painted part is one sixth of the whole wall each painted part is one sixth of the whole wall now let's look at let's look at the the, uh, the, the, the the wall again. The wall is divided into how many equal parts? 
is divided into six equal parts. The wall is divided into six equal parts. And each part that is painted is, of course, one. Because you can see yellow only once. It's painted once. Yellow is painted only once. Blue, the same thing. Orange, the same thing. And green as well is all the same thing. So we realize that the second statement that reads, each painted part is one-sixth of the whole wall is going to be a correct statement. So already we have one of the statements correct. Then we look at the last statement, uh, the third statement rather. It say it reads, each painted part is four fourths of the wall. Each painted part is four fourths of the wall. What the statement simply means is, the wall is divided into four equal parts, and all the four parts are seated. So if you take reference from the wall, it is divided into six equal parts and four out of those equal parts are painted. So the third statement is not also correct. So far we have only one statement that is correct, which reads each painted part is one sixth of the whole wall. We proceed to the next one, that is letter D. The statement reads the fraction of the wall not yet painted is one sixth. The fraction of the wall not yet painted is one sixth. Let's go back to the wall and confirm. The wall is divided into six equal parts. The wall is divided into six equal parts. And let's see how many parts are painted and how many parts are not painted. From the diagram, one, two, three, four, four parts are painted. And again, one, two, Two parts are not painted. So let's go back to the question. The question is saying the fraction of the wall not yet painted is one sixth. But from the wall, we know that two parts are not painted. So one sixth cannot be uh, a correct statement in this case. So again, we can conclude that statement D is also not correct. We move to statement E. Which reads, the fraction of the wall not yet painted is two-fourth. The fraction of the wall not yet painted is two-fourth. That is two all over four. Well, from this point, looking at it, the wall is divided into six equal parts. Having the statement to say the parts that are not yet painted is two-fourths, will mean that the wall is divided into four equal parts, which is not the case. So obviously from that point, we can know that uh, the statement is not true. So it's not correct. Finally, the last one, that is statement F, reads, the fraction of the wall not yet painted is two-sixth. The fraction of the wall not yet painted is 2, 6. Now let's analyze the question before we go to the wall. This will simply mean that you have a certain wall that is divided into 6 equal parts because the denominator is 6. So the wall is divided into 6 equal parts and 2 out of those parts are not yet painted. That is what the statement will mean. So let's go back to the wall and see if that is true. What we have is we have a wall the wall is divided into six equal parts. Well, that tallies with what the statement is, uh, is saying. And also, uh, one, two, three, four, four parts are painted, and two parts are not painted. Two parts are not painted also tallies with what the statement is claiming for. So it means we have a wall and it's divided into six equal parts, and two parts among those, wall, uh, among those uh, equal parts are not painted. And this statement claims that the fraction of the wall not yet painted uh, is 2, 6. So we can see that the answer is true. The statement is true. 2, 6 of the wall is not uh, painted. So, so far, these two statements that are correct in this case is statement B and statement F, which reads, each painted part is 1, 6 of the whole wall. And statement F 
the fraction of the wall not yet painted is two sixth. So we move ahead to another another question. All right, here we have a word problem. Still remember we are on the fraction, so we are dealing with word problems on the on the fractions. It says it reads Mary cut her ribbon into four pieces that are of the same length. The length of one piece of ribbon is what fraction of the length of the ribbon? I will read the question again. Mary cut her ribbon into four pieces that are of the same length. The length of one piece of ribbon is what fraction of the length of the ribbon? Mary can be any individual. If you are lucky that your name is Mary, know that we are using your name. We have a ribbon. It can be of any length. But what Mary did is, Mary cut the ribbon into four pieces. Four equal pieces. So, let's say this is the ribbon. And that's the length. It starts here and ends there. And it's divided into four pieces. Let's say Mary decided to do this. Mary have decided to cut the ribbon into four, four pieces. Now what we are asked is the length of one piece of ribbon is what fraction of the length of the ribbon? Only the length from this point to this other point is the length of one piece of ribbon. From this point to this point is the whole length of the ribbon. So each piece represents one out of the four. So that is going to give us one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. And the question is the length of just one piece of ribbon is what fraction of the whole of the entire ribbon? Well, the question answers itself. Because if you look at it, each length of the pieces of ribbon is one fourth of the whole of the whole ribbon. So the answer to this question is going to give us one one fourth. Each piece of ribbon will be one fourth of the length of the whole the whole ribbon. Then we we'll proceed to another another question and see what we have there. Fatu. I wish it was Senabo. But anyways, it's Fatu, so let's Fatu. Fatu rode her bike for one fifth of a mile on Monday and two fifths of a mile on Tuesday. How many miles did she rode altogether? I will take the question again. Fatu rode her bike for one fifth of a mile on Monday and two-fifths of a mile on Tuesday. How many miles did she ride, or did she ride, rather, did she ride all together? Fadu has a bicycle. I know she enjoys riding bicycles. So on Monday, she decided to ride the bike one-fifth of a mile. One-fifth is written as one all over five. That's one-fifth of a mile. That was on a Monday. And the next day, on Tuesday, she decided to rode the bike for two-fifths of a mile. Two-fifths is reading as two all over five. The one-fifth is for the first day, and the two-fifths is for the second day. Now, what we are asked is, how many miles did she ride all together? How many miles did she ride all together? Well, all together here is simply telling us that we are going to add the miles that she rode the first day and the miles that she rode for the second day. We add them together. So simply, we are going to add the two fractions. We are going to add the two fractions. That is, the, the first day, the distance that she rode, and the second day, the distance that she rode. So we are going to have one-fifth plus two-fifth. If you are following the program, in our previous lessons, we've discussed 
how to add fractions that have the same denominator. We said when you are adding fractions that have the same denominator, you are going to add the numerators and maintain a denominator. And in that lesson, you are told why should you maintain a denominator. So in this case, we just proceed from there. Hence, we are adding and the fractions, they have the same denominator. We are going to add the numerators. So 1 plus 2 will give us will give us 3 all over. 5 is common in both fractions, so we, we maintain one of them. So what do we realize? We realize that Fatu rode the bike for the two days is three fifths of a mile. Fatu uh, ride the bike for three fifths of a mile. So three fifths answers the question: How many miles did she ride all together? How many miles did she ride all together? The answer is three fifth miles. Three fifth miles. Let's move to the other section. All right, we have another question, and it reads, our added five eighths of a bag of soil to her garden. Her friend Binta added 11 eighths bags of soil to her garden. How much more bags of soil did Binta add than our? I will read the question for the second time. Our added five eighths of a bag of soil to her garden. Her friend Binta added 11 eighths bags of soil to her garden. How much more bags of soil did Binta add than our? So let's analyze the question. There are two friends, that is our and Binta, they are friends. And our added eight, uh, five eighths of a bag of soil to her garden. Five eighths is written as five all over eight. Five eighths is written as five all over eight. And the friend, Binta, added 11 eighths bags of soil to her garden. So the friend added 11 eighths. That is 11 all over 8. So Binta added 11 eighths. We label it as B. And our added 5 eighths. So these two friends, each of them added an amount of soil to the garden. Binta added 11 eighths bags of soil to the garden. And our added five eighths of a bag of soil to the garden. The question reads, how much more bags of soil did Binta add than our? How much more bags of soil did Binta add than our? So in a nutshell, what we are trying to find out is, or what we want to know is how much or what amount of soil did Binta add more than our. So in a nutshell, we are going to find the difference between the amount that Binta added uh, with the amount that our added. We are going to take the amount that Binta added minus the amount that our added. That will give us the amount that Binta added more than, more than our. So to do so, to do so, we are going to have the amount that Binta added is 11 all over 8 minus the amount that uh, our added is 5 all over 8. So when you are doing a subtraction of fractions of the same denominator, there is a rule that we came up with. When you have or when you are subtracting 
two fractions that have the same denominator, what you do is you subtract the numerators and maintain a denominator. And that was explained in that lesson. So we are going to apply that rule here because they all have the same denominator. So we are going to have the numerator, which is the numerator of the first one is 11 and the numerator of the second one is 5. So we are going to have 11 minus 5 all over because they share the same denominator. Because they share the same denominator, we are going to maintain 1, which is just 8. So what we have there is 11 minus 5 all over 8. 11 minus 5 will give us what? 11 minus 5 is equal to 6. Then we have the denominator all over 8. Eleven minus five is equal to six, and then we have the denominator, which is eight. So the answer to the question is going to be six eight. Six eight box of soil. All right, we have another another question. We have five eight of a whole circle is colored. 5 eighths of a whole circle is colored. The colored part is separated into two parts. That is green and blue. The green part is 2 eighths of the whole circle. What fraction of the whole is colored blue? I would like to take that again. 5 eighths of, of the whole circle is colored. The colored part is separated into two parts green and blue the green part is five uh, uh, the green part is two eighths that is two all over eight of the whole circle what fraction of the whole is colored blue now what we have here we have a circle that is divided into eight equal parts so out of those eight equal parts five of them are colored and further we realize that five of those parts are colored green and blue we are also told that the part that are colored the parts that are colored uh, green is two eighths out of the five eighths now we are asked what fraction of the whole is colored blue so we are going to have the total that is colored in the circle is five five eighths and we know that they are colored in two colors, that is green and blue. So the part that is colored green is two eighths. The part that is colored green is two eighths. We are asked to find uh, the part that is colored blue. So simply we are going to take the entire part of the circle that is colored minus the part that is colored uh, green that will give us the part that is colored blue. So we're going to have 5 all over 8 minus 2 all over 8. So I'm just going to bring the division sign there, the subtraction sign rather. So this is going to give us, again, in subtraction, we said if you have the same denominator, you just take the difference of the, two, the numerator. So we are going to have 5 minus 2 all over, we bring one denominator, which is 8. That will simply give us 5 minus 2 is equal to 3 all over 8. So simply, the part that is colored blue is 3, 8. The part that is colored blue is 3, 8. Yes, here we have uh, another question and it reads, Jalba Kuyate supposed to practice Kora for three fourths of an hour every day. Today, he has practiced for one fourth of an hour. What fraction of an hour does he need to practice? I will take the question over again. Jalba Kuyate supposed to practice Kora for three fourths of an hour every day. Today, 
he has practiced for one fourth of an hour. What fraction of an hour does he need to practice? Let's simplify the question. Let's talk about it. We all know Jalba the, the Kora man. He's supposed to practice Kora for one fourth of an hour. One fourth of an hour. Every day he's supposed to do that. Uh, sorry, three fourths of an hour every day. So today, he has practiced one fourth of an hour. Today he has practiced one fourth of an hour. We are asked what fraction of an hour does he need to practice. So we are going to uh, simplify that. Let's say we have this to be one hour. And he used to practice three fourths of an hour. So we can divide the hour into four, four equal parts. So we are going to have that and that. So normally he practices from here to here. That is three fourths. That is one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. So he practices for three fourths. And today what he did is he has practiced for one fourth. He already practiced from this point to this point, just one fourth. We are asked what fraction of an hour does he need to practice in order to meet the number of hours that he practiced for a whole day. So obviously if you look at it, it is also subtraction because we need to find from this point to the other point. So what we do is we are going to take the total that he practiced every day minus the time that he practiced for, for today. So that is going to give us the total that he practiced for every day is three fourths. So we are going to have three all over four. We are going to have three all over four minus the, the, the time that he practiced for today is one fourth. We have one all over, all over four. So the time that he used to practice every day is three fourths and the time that he practiced today is one fourth. So in order to have the time that he will need to practice today, in order to have the complete time that he used to practice every day, we are going to take the difference. So again, we look at it, we have the same denominator. We take the difference of the numerator. So the numerator we have, the first fraction has three, the second fraction has one. So we're going to have three minus one all over. The denominators are the same, you maintain one denominator. So if you take the difference between the uh, numerators, 3 minus 1 is going to give us 2 all over 4. So simply, we say he need 2 fourths of an hour to, uh, to practice in order to have the full time that he used to practice every day. That brings us to the end of the lesson. I thank you all for listening. And again, uh, to do justice to uh, the health department, we like to encourage all of you to continue practicing the uh, health precautions about the virus. Continue cleaning your hands every day and use uh, clean water to do that. Also avoid uh, crowd areas and so on. So I thank you all for your kind attention. children and staff of Mary's Little Lamb School are contributing this song to help in the fight and sensitization of coronavirus in the Gambia. Dear children, please listen to doctors' advices and the Ministry of Health to help stop the spread of this virus. Avoid handshakes, avoid social gatherings, wash your hands always with soap and clean water, stay at home. And if anyone around you is suspected of...
communication connectivity is everything we ensure that the links never sleep quantities and qualities all in our data service providing efficient reliable voice and data service we believe if you're not up to speed then you're going backwards communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light whatever business you're in having someone who understands your needs is critical that is why we just don't offer you technology we offer you solutions enjoy gumsell's internet broadband anytime anywhere your national operator gumsell yaibarom Yeah, <laughs> 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 56 branches more to the Gambia. Huh? Ka. Gambia Kono and in Gambia Bantala Bangol. Nko Kodo Kia Beret. Kodo Sifa Sifa for Palindiro for Nadi Lata Memena Kodi to Koton in Kodi Maro. Janum number one in Yonda. And Nun for another another enterprise is Sotali. Golam Nintuko, Domoro Fanam Kol Fanam Bay Fira de Dadi Man in Domoro Nifane Betiat. Gambia Dauda Yalom of Fakindo Sotali. Ha, one more I fell in the other. I Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a bright future in communication. Boy, Janno Seekers Restaurant. Yes, I know who be in the Dimbal. Number Domoro Karajano. Domoro Senata, Adiata, Topotoro, Fanan Kendama Bigi. Luntan During, Tamala, Abeka Domoro Kijani. 
adi manda wala de takawe bi jele anim fanan ka fadi jak ikono e fa e ka min na ko test anim bakery iko fanan be kale le ba de lomba conference lomba workshop lomba ye fo fendi lo dunia ko no domoro betama nyil lom international o tewda number 1 amanke ba do mala jang dama e sa do mo jang e sa atari ya a wo mu kuba ndi sa na ko sa futandi e oto sa na ko be mu sikes restaurant ndaba na jang mu yat ni manje do rombi jang aban sikes restaurant known for best quality food and customer satisfaction